Hello. So I've always been a fan of horror films. I've always seen they, they really push the visual envelope of, of what can be done. And frankly, I think they're just a little underappreciated. So I figured, why not take a crack at it? We'll uh, see if we can pick up some tips along the way. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that little tiny excerpt of a horror film. We threw that together in the last few days. It's been a little while since I've shot a horror film, so I thought it'd be kind of fun and interesting to see if we could gain any more insight into the process. So let's take a look at the tips and tricks we learned. It's not an exhaustive list. It's just some tips and tricks that I have learned over the process of shooting a few horror films. Let's take a look. Now, any good horror film will try to build suspense and tension, and it really does make the payoff that much sweeter. But how do you do that? How do you go about it? So lighting is actually a great way to really build the suspense and tension. And it's not really the first thing that comes to mind when shooting a horror film. I mean, sure, stylistic choices, uh, you know, very dramatic lighting, very low key lighting, that of course jumps to mind. But how do you build suspense with something like that? Well. In my view, at least, it's really about creating a subjective look that really reflects the inside feelings of the main character. So, I mean, this is really where you can play around. You can make things over dramatic looking, you can bring in gelled lights and just really kind of blow out the color. It's, it's a very subjective process that obviously you have to figure out with the director and what they're thinking, but horror films especially really let you kind of push the envelope in a lot of ways. Keep in mind when making setups, although not all lighting has to be motivated, you generally want to keep lighting mostly motivated through different practicals or different lights that would make sense in the environment. Otherwise, you kind of risk just confusing the viewer. So have fun, but at the same time, really choose wisely about where you want to put those specific experimental type shots. So let me put my money where my mouth is. Let's break down a few of the setups from the very, very short horror film you just saw. So first I'll break down the dining room scene where you saw Colleen writing at the very beginning and then we'll kind of move on from there. So this shot was actually lit with a double diffuse softbox that was bouncing down onto the table itself. So it gave Colleen a little bit of fill. And then at the same time, it was slightly hitting her face directly. So this kind of gave her some good definition on the top while also filling in some of the shadows. Now, next I noticed that there was a floodlight outside and this is kind of where the motivation thing comes in. I wanted to use that practical to motivate a slight rim light on her that ends up actually turning more into the key as the shot goes on once the power goes out. So what I ended up doing was I put a Fresnel 1K in the laundry room so that it was directed at Colleen at the back of her head. And this kind of gave her a nice little outline that we saw. And then once the lights went out, 
it ended up kind of filling in a little bit of her face. And at that point, we actually added a reflector board to the opposite side of her face so that it could fill in the other side. And what we ended up using for reflector board was the pizza box that I talked about in the last video. So if you wanna learn more about that, go check out that video. Now, next we'll actually jump to the hallway shot. Now, what I really wanted is the candle itself to motivate the rim light around her. I know it was a little extreme, but this is kind of where I took the subjective stylistic liberties. So as far as what I did, I actually had a 1K Fresnel that was pointed at the wall with barn doors and a moonlight gel on it that I kind of used to shape the light. That would give it the motivation of being the moon going through a window. And in front of that, above the hallway, I actually had another Fresnel. I had the 200G with the aperture Fresnel clicked on as well as some full CTO gel. I ended up only having the light at about 1%, I believe. And I had it do kind of a flicker to mimic a candle that I ended up just programming in the manual section. And basically what that did is it gave me a slight rim light on Colleen that was somewhat motivated by the candle. And you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I think if I were to redo it, I would attempt to make the rim light a little more balanced on the candle itself so that it would kind of emanate outward more rather than just hitting Colleen on the, uh, I believe it was pretty heavy on the top of her head. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how it came out and I think it made for a very stylistic shot. Next, we'll go into ways to build suspense through cinematic framing, shot type, and a tip from Hitchcock himself. But before we do, consider subscribing and giving the video a like. It helps small channels like mine out a ton and it shows YouTube as well as me that there's a demand for videos like these. So if they help you out or you got some useful information from them, I'd really appreciate it. And if not, that dislike button works extra well if you hit it twice. Okay, now back to the video. So another major way to build tension and suspense is actually through a technique called the voyeuristic wide shot. Now this is actually characterized by a wide shot that is distant with a telephoto lens that generally has an object or a plant or maybe another animal obscuring the view. The whole goal of this type of shot is really to give the impression that the character is actively being watched, even if there's not a physical being looking at them. Just the introduction of the outside world watching in on this one character generally tends to make the audience much more on edge and really worry for that character. Another tip that most people don't really think about is actually leaving long tails on your clips. So basically that means just letting the camera continue to record even after the subject is a left frame. This can really make the audience question the reality of the world and whether or not there's another being watching them. This idea that the individual isn't alone actually really builds on the Hitchcockian idea of giving the audience extra information that they then cannot tell the main character because it's a movie. This tension between wanting to tell the character, don't do what you're about to do, and the character not being able to hear you is actually a big part of suspense as a whole and something that Hitchcock himself talked about in his famous bomb under the table example. In his example, there's a five minute boring conversation about some guys talking about baseball. At the end of the five minutes, a bomb goes off. Not very interesting. However, if at the beginning of the five minute conversation, you show a bomb underneath and have a five minute timer, and then go back up to the conversation, the entire time the viewer is sitting on the edge of their seat wanting to tell them to get out of the room because the bomb's gonna go off. Now, he actually said that you never actually want that bomb to go off, which is a whole nother can of worms, but that suspense is what we're going for. So, like Hitchcock, show the bomb beforehand. Now, this next tip you can actually use in conjunction with the voyeuristic shot, but essentially the idea is to try to film your main character from a higher perspective or have your camera angled down slightly looking at them. This will kind of make them seem smaller in frame and will put them in a weaker position overall. So like I said, this tip can be used in conjunction with the voyeuristic shot. You can actually take that voyeuristic shot and bump it up so that it's looking down at the person. This tends to give at least subconsciously, the opposing force more power relative to the main character. This again increases tension, builds suspense, and makes the audience sit on the edge of their seat even more as they wait to see what happens and how it pans out. Now, likewise, if you ever end up showing your opposing force, whether it's a monster or a person or whatever, maybe try to show it from a low angle, so the camera pointing up. This will at least subconsciously increase the power of the individual or monster that is the opposing force and really even more so decrease that of the main character. 
Now, of course, with both of these tips, use them somewhat sparingly. Don't always shoot them from a down or upward angle. You can get very tired and the message gets muddied. So really choose your specific points where you want to emphasize the power and lack of. Now, horror films love to push the boundaries stylistically. So again, I really wanna drill home that point. Try different things, try weird light setups, try ultra contrasty things. Now, an example of pushing boundaries that we didn't actually end up doing in this film, but is used in a ton of horror films, is a technique called the omniscient camera. And basically that's when a camera is moving without any motivation. So it almost becomes a character in itself. Now, some of you might not know what is motivated camera movement. Well, basically it's the idea that camera movement should always be prompted by either movement of a character or a look. There are a lot of different things that can motivate movement, but basically the idea is that a camera doesn't just move by itself. So when a camera does move by itself, that's considered unmotivated movement, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It can definitely give an ominous feeling, and like Hitchcock showed, it can actually enable you to see that extra information that the main character isn't privy to. So in the end, an omniscient camera actually can add to that supernatural feeling that you could get from a horror film overall and give you extra information, almost as though you're being guided by an invisible hand. And adding to the push against stylistic norms, we're gonna go with a classic that has now almost become a horror norm, the Dutch angle. Now this is basically talked about by everybody everywhere who's ever talked about horror films, but it's essentially the idea that rather than the camera be horizontal or level with the horizon, it's skewed slightly. So this can really give the audience the idea that something's about to happen or something has happened that is very off. And in itself, subconsciously, it does make the viewer feel uneasy because it's not a normal way to be viewing the world. Keep in mind, at this point, it is pretty cliche, but hey, go experiment with it, go play, go have fun. If you can find a great way to fit it in, do it. It's a fun throwback. And finally, as I've already stated, try using hyper-stylized effects. Being scared or being frightened is a highly subjective event. It's basically different for everybody. So use that to your advantage. Use it to motivate different weird effects. Try some crazy light rig, throw in some weird gel colors to elevate the emotions that a certain character is feeling. The sky is really the limit. So there are some tips on shooting horror films. Now, I know there are a ton, a ton I did not cover. So if you have some that you wanna share, please enlighten us and let us know in the comments down below. I'd love to talk to each and every one of you about different effects and different things you've tried or want to try in a horror film. I think horror films are such a fun topic. So anyway, I really have fun talking about this subject. So if it interests you, I'd love to have a conversation about it. All right, that's all I have, guys. If you enjoyed the video and have time, a like is very, very much appreciated. Helps me out a ton. If you want future content like this, go ahead and click that subscribe button. That also helps out and the videos come straight to you. And as always, I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.